fuck was that? Ready? Welcome to What the Fuck Did I Dream Last Night? I am your host, Janie. So I kind of left you all hanging after the most emotional time of the year episode. Um, I said I had some things to share and some dreams to talk about. Well, the most emotional time of the year was just an appetizer for what was to come. So, one, I am drinking wine tonight. So cheers, Patreons, because you guys are watching this on video. Um, two, Patreons get unedited videos when it's just me by myself. I put those on there for y'all. Um, three, this is the third time I've tried this. The first time I was not recording. The second time I was recording, but my daughter came up right away. Somehow, I don't know how she's escaping up there or what the hell my husband's doing, but three, um, yeah, or that was three. So four, let's go. So the most emotional time of the year was just an appetizer for what really was the most emotional time of year for me. So I've been having some stressful dreams lately because my dad has been battling cancer the past year and he wasn't able to come home as often. And it was just sad too. Like he wasn't like there for the birth of Penny, but she, he did come up and get to meet her and everything in October. So I was glad. Um, but like, then things just kind of like kept going downhill. He ended up uh, passing away at the beginning of January. And even though he's battling cancer, it was still sudden because he was like doing so good with his treatment and everything. And then all of a sudden it was just like a roller coaster ride. So you can only imagine how my dreams have been coming into play and with everything going on. And that made like the whole ride into December. So I've been putting off talking about it because I wasn't sure what I should share and what I shouldn't share or what I should do. Cause I was like worried about my family and everything. I, I just, I didn't know I was in an awkward spot, but then my dad left us kids a note. Um, he wrote it back in 1996 to us and he was always so scared to die young because his father died young. Um, to put it in perspective, I was like I was six months old when my dad's dad died. So my pap died. Um, So like my dad left the world at the same time that like Penny is old enough. But um, he just didn't want us to know that like he wasn't proud of us. And he just wanted to leave some things that like thoughts that he had for us. Um, He just didn't want us to wonder like kind of what if like how he was clearly wondering after his dad passed. But like his dad died suddenly like. Of course. So, um, so the first page was all about following your dreams and to write down your dreams so that they become goals. And I was like, damn, like the whole first page was like, it was like he wrote it to me. It was like he was standing in front of me talking to me right now, saying what he would say. So, I know he would not want me to stop doing this and to stop talking. He was so proud that I started this podcast, but he was also proud that I was going through therapy and everything. Better help. Want to sponsor me yet? Um, Cause that's who I'm using right now. <laughs> but um, like it also when I told him I started a podcast, he's like, no way. That's awesome. I'm like, you're going to become famous. Like you can, um, you're going to go on tour, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dad, I'm not trying to burst your bubble and like maybe one day it might happen, but anybody can buy your microphone and put a podcast out, but you never know. Maybe dad's on my side now, (laughs) but let's go back to December in the first few, uh, like days of January before, like, I don't know. It was an odd time, but maybe times got even odder now. So, but this is what I wanted to tell you guys after the most emotional time of the year episode. Maybe I'll name this one. It's the most emotional time of the year, part two. All right. So this is January 2nd morning dream entry. I was in the 
in a house. And it was long. Think like a trailer, but it was a house. It was like brick. Um, and it had a greenhouse towards the left of it. Like if you were saying the front yard looking onward. And I was in the house with a bunch of doctors from Grey's Anatomy. I don't think that I was a doctor, but I was like BFFs with them all. Maybe I worked somewhere in the hospital with them. I don't know. Who knows? I love my Grey's Anatomy though. So this isn't anything new that I would be dreaming of them or they have been in my dreams before. I look outside and there was funnel clowns coming. Many doctors took off to the secret basement of the greenhouse. It was like you entered the greenhouse and there was a step of um, like stairs downstairs, like a bunker. But I stayed in the house and I kept cooking in the kitchen. It started raining and Dr. Bailey from Grey's Anatomy was like, okay, I'm going for shelter. And she took off like running for the greenhouse. And it wasn't like a long like walk, but she was wearing paper scrubs and the rain washed them like away, like off. Like it was like, I don't like paper mache, like maybe think of like, and then she was just like naked and she was like panicking and she was like, Oh, what do I do? Like she just like took off running down the steps though. And I mean, who wouldn't be panicking being like naked in front of colleagues and friends? Like, yes, go back to, I don't know. I think it was like episode two or three that I talked about being naked. Yeah. Um, so the next thing I'm still in the kitchen cooking and this tornado is coming and it was like a tiny tornado that came through the house. But it wasn't like an actual tornado tornado. It was like an electric tornado or like a ghost-like tornado. It was like a energy tornado, I would say. And it made me feel like static electric went through me. Or like think about like how you picture like in the movies or like cartoons when someone gets shocked by electric and you're like, oh, um, patrons, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, episode that I just did again. <laughs> um, but it was so weird or like ghost like it was just like or do you, do you guys watch ghost um that show how like uh if the if a human walks through a ghost on that TV show like it like hurts them and they like kind of like blah, 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 blah. they like um I don't know they kind of like disperse and then um like come back and like it's painful but like it's not so painful. It's just like, oh, well, that fucking sucked. Um, that's kind of what happened. So like next thing, my dream shifted to a whole new thing. And I was still like doing food stuff though. I was taking food to school. Um, and then I was at soccer practice, but I kept switching like back and forth and being a coach for younger kids. Like I'm talking like two and three year olds. And then I was an older soccer player, like playing for the high school team. But I was so worried about getting food to my grandma's house for dinner. Like I was making it in the, um, you guys had like the home ec classes and stuff. You had like multiple kitchens. Like I was like plugging in like crock pots, like this, this and that in there. And then I was just wanted to get it to my grandma's house. Um, yes, my grandma Don's house where I always end up in my dreams. Um, and then I ended up just like taking her like it was like I took her a bunch of like half eaten like not half eaten food but like a shit ton of leftovers like meatballs pasta like it it was just weird like but you could tell that it was like has been like eaten but that's what I took over for us and her like I just wanted to make dinner for her and that dream so let's dive into the next one I don't have a date for this dream but I'm with my sister and we have an old elementary school that we both attended. Um, we both attended for like a short time uh, because we moved during it. But she, I think, went there the whole time. I went there for like kindergarten, first grade, maybe second grade. But um, it is Fort Allen Elementary School for any local listeners. But it wasn't that school for say, you know, how Dreamland works by now, at least in my mind. It's like, I know this is what it's supposed to be, but like, it's not really that building. So we were outside, like maybe like recessy like type of stuff. Um, and all of a sudden they were calling over the intercom. Uh, and it was like the end of the day too, like buses and stuff were supposed to be coming, but like, I don't know. Um, but they, they came over the intercom and it was like, 
go inside now to the lowest level and take shelter. If you have a lunch packed, please take it down too, because this is serious. And I look at my sister and I'm like, and like, we're at like the ages we are now, like 37 years old. Like that's how old we are in this dream now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I packed today. Like we can split everything. Let me like, run and get it. And I remember having like an apple in there and like a sandwich or I, I, I don't know. I definitely know there was an apple or whatever, but and this is all because a tornado and rain was coming. And so me and her stacked a bunch of pillows and things to make like a fort together downstairs, like in the lowest level, like basement of the school. Um, and like we had the lunch that I brought and this is probably like the best we've ever worked together in like a serious situation um, without like fighting or anything because we're sisters. Like that's what you do, right? Um, but like we just worked so well together. And that dream. So, need some more wine. Both of these dreams were in the same month. Maybe not like January or December, January, but like, you know what I mean? Like, the same like 30 days or whatever. So, let's dive into some meetings and see what happens. Tornadoes are up first, clearly. I mean, this is the main storyline in both of those dreams. So, possible meanings of a tornado. You're feeling out of control with the situation. Your anxiety is worsening in you. You want to make a change in you, um, being like a, maybe a, a new habit or you want to quit a bad habit. It could be either or. You're stressed over choices that you need to make in life. Clearly, you might be dealing with some like hardships or like big choices that are going to change like your life, like different pattern or pattern and everything you're going to take. Um, you need to balance out your life more, or you could be dealing with arguments with loved ones in your awake life. Now, surviving the tornado means that you are going to advance in your life and achieve more that you have been wanting to. So with that part, let's chat. This really hits like the nail on the head with me, um, with things because I have been feeling like, I don't know, it just it really like goes down to like things that I've been feeling during this time. But I remember my biggest thing that I always say that you had guys have to remember this, that you are the one to figure out your dreams the most. Like you have to look at how you take this, um, say tornado. Maybe you like tornadoes. So maybe this is a positive thing for you. Maybe you're deathly afraid of tornadoes. So it could be, it's a negative thing or positive thing. You are the best person to decipher your dream. So please, please, please always remember that in all of our episodes. Um, you are the help of like books and like going online and listening to us and everything. Like they are helpful in figuring out, but you're the best one to do it. Um, so with that being said, now looking back, seeing how my sister and I worked together in that second dream to survive it, we worked so well together. Um, I feel like it might have been like foreshadowing. Um, like, I don't know if you guys believe in like the foreshadowing, like that dreams could do. And maybe that dream was telling me that like, hey, we're gonna need to work together here soon. Like, you got to one of us, we both need to be the bigger person. Like, we got to get this shit, like, done. Um, and maybe showing that we're, like, capable of that. My sister is my best friend, and yet we're, like, the biggest enemies. Like, we love each other at the end of the day. But we have, but we can be, like, complete bitches to each other. But I feel like that's what sisters are, you know? Um. And we did have arguments during the struggle with our dad passing away, like even because we had to book plane tickets and it was just, it was a shit show. Um, it wasn't good. And, but like, I still loved her and we got through it, you know? So maybe I felt like this dream could have been like telling me like, you got to get down there. Um, and we have to work together and everything and. Um, I mean, I also feel like this is 100% normal when you're losing a loved one and everything, like you're going to fight, you're going to argue with people, but me, this dream was telling me to like prepare for it. Um, and 
maybe I need to pay more attention to my dreams in this way. Like, I'm not sure. Because I don't, like, decode every dream I have the next morning. I write them down and I'm like, okay, do I need to look into this now? Or what I mean is if it's not triggering me or, like, anything. Um, but I think now I might need to, like, look into them more now. Because I feel like maybe that was foreshadowing. I'm curious, like, how that'll be. Um... Because, like, with the help of my therapist now and my three-year-old, who now just keeps randomly telling me, she used to say, like, if we would ask her where Pap was, she'd be like, we have the doctors. Now she just randomly tells me. She comes up to me. She's like, where's Pap? He's better now. And I'm like, all right. So now this leads me to think that the spiritual world is closer than we most think. And I believe this and I've brought it up before in the show but I kind of feel like I like got smacked in the face with it now and I'm like okay I hear you like I I, I don't know what the hell I believe in or what y'all believe in but I, I don't know either but who knows she's just my thoughts right now um so after all of that <laughs> let's talk about some other symbols from the dream soccer I've dreamt about soccer before, too. But, so if you dream about soccer, are you um, sex-starved? This has to be your forward thing. But I'm going to include it, because who knows. Um, so if you're dreaming about soccer, you could be suppressing your sexual orgy. Or, or, not orgies. Suppressing your sexual urges. Maybe you need orgies. <laughs> and you just can no longer do it. Uh, it could also mean that success is right around the corner. You need to let go of your worries. And teamwork is also needed in your life. Ching, ding, 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 ding. Does that not play into everything how I just said? How I was deciphering my dream up top? Man. I don't know. Dream experts clearly know something. Just kidding. You guys study this shit. I get you. Um, so let's talk about uh, what a greenhouse in a dream can mean. It can mean that you want to improve your life or self, uh, positive features in store for you. So I like this because I feel like greenhouses was like the safe spot in my dream. So I feel like it ties into this. Uh, also to own a greenhouse in your dream means that you are going to own a business in your future too. So now I am the help of my good old therapist, I am going to remember my dad in a positive way. Also, like, from his note and everything, like, I need to do this. I want to continue to make him proud. So more episodes are going to be coming. And I'm going to keep on trucking because that's what he wants. Yes, tears are going to be shed, but I'm not stopping my goals because I know it's what he wants. So I feel like maybe the greenhouse could, like, come into that, like, in, like, a sad <clears throat> like morbidy kind of like shitty like in a shitty ass way my dad dying is like kicking my ass in gear like I'm a go-getter now like this is what I need like I'm doing this and it's always been in me but I wasn't done making him proud and I want to keep making him proud so I am just I'm going strong like this is what I'm doing so with all of this, um, if you've lost someone near and dear to you, please reach out to help being a friend or therapist. And if you keep having dreams about them, write them down to express yourself, to get them off of your chest and everything for the least bit. But please always seek out for help from a medical professional if you need it. I thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget, you guys can follow us on TikTok at WTF Did I Dream Last Night, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we also have a Facebook page now because you can listen to the episodes on Facebook now somehow. I don't really know how that works yet, but they're on there. Um, and don't forget to join Patreon and you get to see my lovely face here. Um, and you can watch any episodes that I do by myself that are video on there, plus some bonus content. Um, we greatly, greatly appreciate you guys. And until next time, happy dreaming. Bye.